I'm, I'm plainly delighted because the topic is so fascinating. Young adult literature. And I'm yet to define young adult literature, nor do I know anything about your definition. How do you define? Because everything looks young, everything looks suitable for young adults, and everything looks like young adult literature. So I would like to take you to something which is essentially Indian. Maybe after my narration, you may have to visit your library, see whether you can access such books, and then validate my point. So do not take anything just because I have said you have to put it to acid test, verify and if you have an opinion, fortunately, within quotation, if you have your own opinion, you are most welcome to have it because having an idea, having an opinion, having a philosophy is a matter of affordability. If you can afford it, you are most welcome to have it. I would like to take you to Kathopanishad first, take Nachiketas from there and bring him closer to somebody whom you are very familiar with, Harry Potter. Right? I really do not know how many of you are Potterians, that's my own coinage. I call it Potterians because we had in our college way back when J.K. Rowling brought out her first book, we started a Potter Club. Later on it became Dumbledore Army and most of us insisted, why most of us, every one of us wanted to be a Gryffindor Certainly not a Slytherin, nowhere near Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. So I was a Gryffindor and we had a Dumbledore army. After 3.30 in the evening, we used to have a beautiful, beautiful discussion where age never mattered, caste never mattered, community never mattered, why even language never mattered. Um, some of my children spoke something like English, that's all. Uh, I, th I thought it's okay, it's okay to talk something like English. Amidst people who insist on talking only in English. Right? So we had a beautiful, beautiful army. Now I just would like to compare how what you consider to be extremely old, like Katopanishad, to stay so close to your Harry Potter, why even to your Spider Man, even, even to, uh, of course, your Aslan. I do not know how many of you are here die hard fans of Aslan, of Narnia. Right? Fine. So, as we started, uh, again, way back in my own club also, we started analyzing what Katopanishad has got to say. The word, very word, Upanishad just means a kind of conversation between the teacher and the taught. And sometimes, even the taught becomes the teacher. Uh, patient listening itself is a kind of a valuable lesson which a teacher learns every day from children. Most of us mistake that ch teachers alone sculpt children, uh, just a piece of rock into a beautiful, beautiful statue. That's not the case. It's a two-way traffic. Sometimes children also sculpt the teacher to be what a teacher ought to be, just not what a teacher is. So this kind of Upanishad, it just means conversation between two people, the teacher and the taught, or two people, yes. But it is sitting by the side of a teacher, asking millions of questions and the teacher gives an answer or sometimes gives an answer with a definite article, right? Or just gives an answer. That's not the case in Upanishad. If the teacher knows the answer, the teacher has to give the correct answer. If the teacher does not know the correct answer, the teacher is obliged, morally obliged to go around, find out what the correct answer is because a classroom is, has got the sanctity of the sanctum sanctorum of a temple. So, it may be under a banyan tree also. Now the teacher and the taught, in Katopanishad, a little boy called Nachiketas, strangely, during the Kargil war, the first pilot who was captured by the uh, enemies, his name was Nachiketas. You know, it was such a strange irony, somebody who is willing to make a sacrifice. Now, Nachiketas must be in his 16th couple of years younger to you. His father happens to be his guru also, right? So, Vajasravas and he would like to perform a yajna, right? Because in, in Hinduism, you have, you call it, don't call it Hinduism because British made us Hindus. You call it Sanadana Dharma and in that you find there are various phases. When you are a little child, it is called Shishu. Then you become a toddler, Bala Parvam, the phase where you are a little child. Then you move on to what you call now Kaumaram, the youngsters, 
right after which you have the graha or the grahastham taking up uh, the responsibility of running a family you become a parent right on a family after some time you have to abandon all these let go whatever you held very close to your heart and move on to vanaprasam after which you have sanyasam now coming to ajasravas he is now at the stage where he performs a yagna uh, a ritual where he is expected to give away things which are very very close to his heart nachiketas happens to be the best of his children and best of his students also and nachiketas who is 16 years is all in admiration of his father and he is all in admiration of his father as a guru also and he wouldn't wouldn't move even a nano inch from his father's whatever the father has been telling him now what happens unfortunately his father happens to be giving away things which are worthless most of us mistake charity this way we give away things which are no longer of any use to us we don't even care to know whatever is useless to us may not be of any use to anybody else also now that's what happens when there is a flood that's what happens when there is an earthquake with all good intention you just give away things which you never wanted in your life or which you never use in your life but that's exactly what happens here in katopanishad also the father gives away cattle because cattle happens to be the symbol of wealth and that's exactly why even tiruvalluvar calls it maadu maadu means selvam riches the cattle and the father gives away the cattle which would anyway die within couple of days and which do not yield milk either now what happens as the father keeps giving the little boy is feeling extremely embarrassed and understand embarrassment is the subtlest kind of pain anybody can undergo nobody ever understands how painful embarrassment could be especially when you hold somebody in great esteem and the person unfortunately falls down and you are not able to hold them again in the same uh, stature it hurts you tremendously most often students uh, undergo this when their teachers fall short of their expectation or the guru falls short of the expectation and nashiketas just goes near the father and just he prompts he tells his father whom are you give, going to give me to you have to give me also to somebody indirectly hinting his father that i happen to be acknowledged by you that i am the best of your children and best of your students so whom would you like me to be given away to and the father pretends as if he has not heard the boy again compels the father to listen for the second time and the third time nachiketas tells this to his father father becomes angry because father understands he knows that what he is doing is wrong and he is being corrected by his son and child which is certainly not acceptable the father immediately says unto death i give you unto death i give you a way to death remember fortunately for us katopanishad or any upanishad for that matter is absolutely allegorical with so much of scope for interpretation so much of scope for commentaries so much of scope for you to accommodate your evolution intellectual evolution it's never static it's always dynamic as you go back to katopanishad after two or three days it has got something else to tell you not because it has got something else to tell you you have grown within 48 hours and your perspective is something different and you look at it from an entirely different angle which is absolutely invisible so long you know the boy goes back he goes to visit yama and he waits say for 3 days and yama is absolutely democratic yama is the only person who is very democratic or 100% democratic death is 100% democratic there is no difference in your caste or community or race or your intellectual superiority or inferiority or whatever it is whatever may be a kind of an invisible wall that grows between you and the other once a boy waits the death is really really overwhelmed with emotion looking at this boy who is a tejasvi who is full of brilliance brilliance that he has got out of intelligence understanding compassion so death comes to him and tells him actually i visit people this is the first time somebody has come visiting me so i'll give you three boons and you're most welcome to ask i'll just shift you to another scene it is hogwarts you have the sorting hat 
and the sorting hat is put on every student's head and the hat just looks into your brain and you can visualize the beautiful scene and it murmurs under breath in a voice which is audible only to you and it wonders to which group you should be put into again life is full of choices and moral literacy makes you compels you to take the right choice now coming back to nachiketas once again he is given three bones and the first one as you may ask anything any 16 year old you know you are given a boon and you have to ask for anything onuka enukku apdi or varam kurtha enna pannu that's all you have got a long catalog of unending wishes and you may offer the best among the best but this little boy first thing he asks is okay you ask me to go back to my father but when i go back to my father he has to accept me with the same love which he showed on me when i was his kid right anybody who is dead may be very close to your heart without whom you may feel that you may not live at all but yet if the dead were to come back alive how many of us will accept them with love and without fear or repulsion is a very very difficult question here is nachiketas asking for the first boon give me the boon that when i go back to my father he has to accept me and love me as intensely as he used to love me without any fear or revulsion that i have visited death and come back death is really taken aback because it never expected this kind of a boon to be asked from a little boy by a little boy hardly 16 years so the giver of the boon is now he decides to be very guarded he has just given away three now he is very worried because he doesn't know what the next question will be so the first one granted you go back to your father he will nachiketa us your father vajras vajasavas will accept you with the same love second one the boy just draws closer to uh, death yama and asks him see everybody thinks agni or fire has got a sanctity every little offering is made to fire and people say it reaches you it reaches heaven there is no death, death there is no birth there is no poverty there is no disease there is nothing here where you are mr death and why do people believe that whatever is being offered to fire reaches you no death would not have thought about it at all again children please remember the most brilliant answer comes from the most challenging question blessed are the teachers who have children who ask them challenging questions and keep them ticking blessed are the teachers now yama or death is a blessed teacher here is a child who challenges him and now yama has not rehearsed it at all it is out of syllabus he has never been prepared for this kind of question and he immediately says fire of all the elements of the five elements fire is a purifier you can pollute water you can pollute air you can pollute earth why we have been successful in polluting even space with whatever spaceship you send and which gets deactivated after some time but fire can never be polluted fire is a purifier and that's exactly why you have your conscience which keeps on burning you down and not allowing you to have peaceful sleep whenever you go wrong fire is a purifier and anything that is offered again coming back to your harry potter anything thrown any fraudulence or any kind of lie that is put into the cauldron of fire will have to be thrown back right it's again called on a fire which sim- symbolizes your integrity your solidarity your honesty the best of all your values so if you are under age immediately it will be thrown away now coming back once again nachiketas asks this question and the teacher death is so very happy so very happy to have at last got a child who could bring out the best answer from him and he says nachiketas i bless you wherever this particular agni uh, is lit for a holy purpose let it be called nachiketagni named after you it will be called nachiketagni okay fine and now for the third one and the teacher is really really scared because he doesn't know what the third uh, boon will be the third question will be the boy is already warmed up remember 12 to 20 is the most most beautiful time in your life 
we talk about vivekananda and vivekananda called katopanishad the most brilliant upanishad and he was all in fascination of this little boy nachiketas we all quote uh, vivekananda we says we we say rather vivekananda asked for 10 young men with the help of whom he can change the destiny of a nation he did not just like that randomly ask for 10 men irresponsible 10 men who are not curious 10 men or 10 young people who have no sense of responsibility at all he qualified the uh, the request he said i would appreciate 10 young men who are as passionate as nachiketas so that i can change the destiny of the country now coming to the third one the third question happens to be smilingly the little 16 year old asks yama who are you right and remember the third answer for katopanishad happens to be the seed of gitopanishad your bhagavad gita is otherwise called gita upanishad plainly because there is again a teacher and a taught you have krishna and arjuna questions are being shot out and uh, you find krishna being compelled to give an answer now death immediately uh, apologizes and says you ask me for anything right you want all the riches in the world you are given you want a long life given but do not ask for a long life ask also for eternal youth or else you will become a ulysses right or you will become a telemachus so you have to have eternal youth and eternal life okay you got it he offers